Hello everyone and welcome to another classic custom campaign. Today we're going to be starting the journey of Ulio. This campaign came out around 2002, looking by the date of this post, and you can tell it's that old because the sound files, oh, they are divided into zips of roughly 1.3 megabytes each so that each of them fits on one floppy disk. Anyway, this is one of my favorite campaigns, and if you like strong single-player narrative story-driven campaigns, this is one of the best. So the story, in this campaign, you will step into a dead man's shoes. You will be part of a mad hermit's tale, a tale of hatred and vendetta, of schemes and noble motives, and of guilt. Not only will your battle skills be challenged, you will be challenged to follow Ulio on his way into his downfall, and to only leave him behind at the very end. You will be the actor, you will be the spectator, and you will be the judge. No radiant victory waits at the end, only clarity about Ulio's fate. Prologue, A Grave in the Rain I wonder where we are. What does it say on that lonely tomb? It reads, Here rests Prince Ulio. Hey, I've heard that name before. But why is he buried here, in the woods, like an outlaw? Come on, we have better things to do than stare at old tombs. Let's find a place to dry. I am soaking wet. Hello? Anybody in there? Please let us in, or the weather will kill us. Come in. Julio. By Ingo Van Teel. All persons and events in this story are fictitious. Any similarity with real persons, living or dead, is coincidental. The travelers looked into an old and wrinkly face. Thank you, one of them said as little water drops rolled down his forehead. The hut owner shuffled to the fireplace. Get there to dry, he said in a hoarse voice. The travelers had not even sat down at the fire when he suddenly asked his question out of nowhere. Seen that grave? One traveler looked up, slightly puzzled. Yes. Prince Ulio, the old man said, nodding to himself. I found him. I found him dead and buried him. Yes. Hmm, the other traveler said absentmindedly. I found him, the old man repeated in a more urgent voice. The men looked at each other and raised their brows. Another odd old man dying to tell his tale. Oh well, he would probably repeat it three times to them before the rain stopped. But it was dry in here, and the thunderstorm was still raging outside. One of the travelers stretched himself. I thought that Prince Ulio had disappeared, he said. But that was long ago. My grandparents were young when it happened. The old man shuffled over to the young traveler, put a bony hand on his shoulder, and glared at him. And as he spoke, his voice grew louder with every word. You do not know anything about poor Prince Ulio, eh? You do not know what they did to him. You do not know. 
The young man gave him a bewildered look and tried to tear loose from the firm grip on his shoulder. Let go, please, he murmured. His companion came to his rescue. Come on, my old fellow, he said in a soothing voice. Tell us about it. Yes, the old man murmured, slowly letting go of the young man. You heard about the War of the Two Lions? The traveler rubbed his shoulder. Yes, but that was in my grandfather's day. No respect for the past, you children, the old man grunted. This war scarred our country. The two lions, yes, King Oleg and King Agiric. They fought against each other for thirty-five years. Thirty-five years, you hear me? All very fine, one of the travelers said. But what does that war have to do with Prince Julio? A lot, the old man said. A lot, a lot, a lot. It all started when King Oleg's wife Amalia died in childbirth, and the newborn heir did not even breathe long enough for his first cry. The travelers closed their eyes. This would be a long evening, they thought to themselves. Hopefully the rain would stop soon.